All right, so a couple of things that we're going to talk about first off are energy conservation and energy efficiency. So basically, energy efficiency is a way to conserve energy. So energy conservation is just using less energy. Energy efficiency is using less energy to provide the same service. So an example of this would be like using an LED bulb instead of an incandescent bulb. Um, so an LED bulb uses about eight to nine watts of power to emit, I think it's like 100 lumens of light versus an incandescent bulb that uses 60 watts of power to emit um, like 100 lumens of light. So you're using much less electricity to get the same amount of light. So uh, it's important to, to consider energy efficiency and energy conservation because right now, as it is, there's like 67% of all of the energy that we use in the US is rejected and wasted. Rejected is another word for wasted. So it's um, in just through like all of the inefficiencies in the processes. So like in electricity generation, you have to uh, you know, use power to power the power plant that creates the electricity that goes to your house. Um, also, like when we have electricity like flowing through the lines, the transmission lines, like a lot of that is being um, lost to heat energy uh, as the electron or as the current travels through the wires. Um, and then in transportation, um, just like our, our vehicles are just wildly inefficient and we lose a lot of potential um, use to like heat into the universe. If we conserve energy, we're basically stretching out the resources that we have available. So we use less resources. Um, and so that'll save us money in the long run and also produce less pollution, uh, which is better for our health. And also again, saves us money in the long run um, because we don't have to clean up as much environmental damage or there's not as many health costs associated with air pollution or water pollution. Um, so we're basically stretching the resources that we have, even if we are using fossil fuels, you know, if you're conserving energy, you're using less of those fossil fuels per person. And that also means that we don't have to like go and find a new source of energy, which is expensive too. So um, there's a couple of, I guess, tiers at which you could consider conservation. Um, so there's like individual methods that each one of us can take. And these have an impact, but it's a fairly limited impact um, because you know we can only control our individual actions. We can't control the actions of everybody else. We can't control, and there's a lot of things that are out of our control because of the way that our society and economics works. Um, so one of the things that you can do is to adjust your thermostat. So maybe like turn your thermostat down in the winter um, and put on an extra jacket and, or turn it up in the summertime so that you don't have to use the air conditioning as much or the heater as much. Uh, insulate your house and seal gaps in your home's exterior. Uh, if you have an old house with older windows, maybe get new windows. You lose like 20 to 30% of the energy in your home through your windows. Uh, so if you get more modern windows um, that have like double pane and like insulation and all that stuff, it saves a lot of energy. Um, so conservation in, uh, in transit, so walking or biking, so using a, a form of transportation that doesn't use any um, like external energy source other than the, the food energy, I guess, that you have to consume. Um, or taking public transit, so that's a way of increasing the efficiency. So if we have more people in a vehicle or carpooling, um, more people in a vehicle increases the efficiency of that use. Um, using energy efficient appliances and gadgets, um, so like, you know, switching your light bulbs to LED bulbs versus incandescent or uh, compact fluorescent. Um, turning off lights and appliances when they're not being used, um, especially things that have like converters on them or like little red lights to show that it's still plugged in, but the whole thing is off. Um, that's still pulling a minute amount of electricity. Unplugging those um, will help reduce your electricity use. Um, and then at like, Government levels, uh, they could, like local governments could imp improve public transit, um, which would encourage people to use it. Um, so like around here, public transit is not super efficient. Um, so it's not as appealing uh, versus in like Washington DC or New York City, it's very efficient um, and a lot of people use it. 
Um, the government, both at the local, the state, and the federal level can implement tax benefits uh, or penalties for improving efficiencies of homes and businesses. Um, the federal government can also put in place um, like guidelines that manufacturers might have to meet, um, either energy producers or like car manufacturers. Of course, manufacturers can go above and beyond that. So like um, General Motors last week said that they were going to go, um, their goal was to be carbon neutral in all of their production and all of their vehicle operations by 2035. Um, so all of their like lighter duty vehicles are all going to be electric energy producers, so like Duke Energy or like a co-op, can also do some things to encourage uh, more efficient use of power and more conservation. Um, so a tiered rate system is charging more for higher uses. So like a big company maybe uh, that uses three or 400 times the amount of power as maybe somebody in an individual house. Um, so maybe they would get car charged like 25 cents per kilowatt hour versus like an individual family in their home might be charged 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, and then, so that's to just like uh, encourage people to be, to have lower uses. Um, and then another uh, thing that some power companies do, um, I know a lot of power companies in California do this, like PG&E, um, they have a variable price structure. So when there is, you pay less, when there's less energy demand. So you, so if there's more energy available on the grid, then you pay less for it. If there's less energy available on the grid, then you pay more for it when everybody's at work doing things on computers, using servers and things like that that pull a lot of electricity, then you would be charged more versus at like nine o'clock at night when people are starting to go to bed you might not have to pay very much for your electricity at all. One of the ways that we can improve efficiency is to use sustainable design when we are building communities and buildings themselves. Um, so our biggest areas of energy use in the US are heating and cooling and lighting. And so you can very, you can take some fairly simple steps um, to design a home or a building so that it kind of takes advantage of the natural heat from the sun or the natural light from the sun. Um, so you might have like, uh, so passive solar design is what this is called. So now it's a lot of common building techniques. In the Northern hemisphere, um, the way that the sun tracks, we get more direct sunlight from the South. Um, and so you would wanna put more windows in your house that face South. Um, so that you get that natural light so that you don't have to turn on the lights in your house. Um, but in the summertime, that mo might pose a problem, especially in areas that are super warm, like where we live. And so if you have uh, between the summer and the winter, the angle of the sun changes a little bit because we're tilted different, the earth is tilted different. Um, so in the wintertime, the angle of the sun is a little bit lower in the sky. In the summertime, it's a little bit higher. So if you have an overhang, um, like you see down here in this picture, it can let the sunlight in in the wintertime, but kind of block it out in the summertime um, to keep it cooler in the summer, warmer in the winter. Another idea is green roofs. Um, so it's basically putting a garden on your roof. You do have to have a little bit more uh, strongly engineered roofs to support all that weight of the soil and the plants and the water but the soil itself provides some insulation and then you get all the other side benefits of plants. Uh, like maybe you could grow food there or it could be habitat for pollinator species or um, you know, it's taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and removing other air pollutants and lowering temperature and all that jazz. So another way to uh, reduce the energy and to make buildings more efficient um, is to use recycled materials. So that means that there is less energy needed to produce the materials. So you don't have to go out and find new raw materials and dig them out of the ground and then refine them into a usable form. Um, you're just taking old things and kind of refurbishing them and using that energy to refine them instead of having to mine them and everything too. And there's lots of other features that can be considered in sustainable design. These are just some that are more common. 